Hello there. Yes, you there, in there somewhere. I'm sure you have arrived at this video because you want to learn how to do stream processing better. And by better, I mean faster and more sustainably. And even if that isn't you, just imagine for a moment your boss has just walked into the room or because everybody's virtual now, your boss has just assigned you a Jira task. Ah! And that Jira task has asked you to revamp the IoT stream processors for the company you work for. Because your company has got hundreds of IoT devices and you're adding hundreds and hundreds more. And every time you add more IoT devices, your stream processor is slowing, slowing, slowing right down. So now you want to speed it up. And you've learnt about this wonderful thing called the Rust programming language with his wonderful mascot, Ferris. And you've learned that Rust can give you performance and safety and sustainability, and it can do all that inside the context of AWS Lambda. We're going to complete that Jira task you've just been assigned, and we're going to complete that together. Now, I know there isn't really a Jira task. If you're panicking, don't worry, there's nobody checking up on you, but you will learn in this video how you can build a stream processor that is high performance, sustainable, and incredibly safe using Rust, using AWS Lambda, and using Amazon Kinesis. Let's get straight into the code base. And all of the samples in this video are available on the serverless Rust documentation site. There's a link somewhere underneath this video. And this is an example of how you can do Kinesis message processing with AWS Lambda. And remember, the task you have is to take take temperature reading sensor data from some IoT devices and process them incredibly, incredibly quickly. This is the main application code. If you look under the lambdas folder and under the new message processor and source, you'll see your main.rs file. And this is the entry point for your stream processor. And like any Rust application that exists, there's a main function. This is the entry point of the application. And then here you're setting up the actual Lambda runtime for Rust. When the runtime executes, it's gonna call this function handler function. And the way the and the way the Kinesis and Lambda integration works is what's called a pol-based invoke. And what that means is that Lambda under the hood is going to periodically pol Kinesis on your behalf. And if there are a set of records that haven't been processed from the last position that Lambda had in the stream, it's going to grab that batch of records and send that batch of records to your Lambda function. And the batch part is important there because when you receive messages into Lambda with Kinesis, you receive them as a vector. So you'll see the function handler that you've gone off and written as part of this task takes this event as its only input variable. This event is a Lambda event of type Kinesis event. And if you have a look at the Kinesis event struct, you'll see that the Kinesis event has this payload property, which is the actual contents of the event. And then it has this records. And this records vector is a vector of Kinesis event records. An individual Kinesis event record is going to represent an individual sensor reading from your sensors that are sending data into Amazon Kinesis. So what you need to do as an aspiring Rust developer is simply iterate over that vector of records. So you write your little for loop, you loop over your Kinesis event records, and then you can actually get access to the actual Kinesis message. And what you'll notice is that the actual body of the Kinesis message, the actual message body comes in as this base 64 data type. So that means you need to convert this base 64 data type into something sensible, something meaningful for your organization. And in that case, that is a new sensor reading. So you're going to convert that data that comes in from Kinesis into this new sensor reading struct. And you'll see the sensor reading has a temperature, helpful, and also the time that that temperature was taken. So you can use this to then actually go and grab and process the data. And one thing you'll notice in your function handler is that you're using this try into function. And this try into function is a really cool feature of the Rust programming language called the try from trait. So you can take any struct and implement the try from trait, and then you can write the logic to actually try and convert one piece of data to another piece of data. And a really important caveat with that feature is that the structure you're converting from has to be defined inside the same crate. So you see I'm wrapping the Kinesis message 
inside this internal Kinesis message, which is a struct particular to this crate, to your application code. And then you can implement this try from trait. So I'm implementing the try from for this internal Kinesis message for my new sensor reading object. And then you can centralize all the code to convert from one type to another into this simple try from function. And it supports error handling here if for some reason it can't be converted. So you're gonna take that data, and this is that base 64 data object you saw earlier, to convert that to a string slice, and then use surday and JSON to convert that from a string slice into an actual struct, in this case, a new sensor reading, and then you can return that new sensor reading back. Excellent, so you've now got a new sensor reading. You've got a struct that is relevant to your business logic. You've got the temperature, you've got the timestamp. Now you can go off and actually handle that sensor reading. But before you do that, you need to handle the errors, right? Because there's every chance that that conversion might fail. What if one of your sensors suddenly goes off the rails and starts sending data in some weird and wonderful new format? So you need to handle that. And you'll notice, and that is why the try from trait is being used. There is a ver other variation of this, which is just called from, which doesn't include the ability to handle errors. It doesn't return a result. Instead, it just returns self. So you're gonna use try from, and then you're gonna handle that error. So if the trying to returns an error, then you want to set this item as a batch item failure. So Kinesis, so the Kinesis and Lambda integration supports partial successes, which means you can return a set of sequence numbers back to Kinesis, and that will handle which ones succeeded, which ones failed, and where exactly in the stream the Lambda polar is up to. So you'll notice right at the top of this function handler function, you declared a new vector of batch item failures. And then if there's an error in the parsing of that body, you can push that sequence number into your batch item failures and then just continue the loop and move on to the next record. And that'll mean when this completes any records that were successful, the Lambda Polo is going to move its position in the stream up to the last successful message. And then you go off and handle the actual sensor reading. And you do that again, using code that's in your own business logic. You don't want to put any business logic inside your actual Lambda function handle. You want to make sure the business logic is separate from what's actually calling it. And that means if for some reason you decide to stop using AWS Lambda, for some reason you decide to manually write all of the code to do this polling and run it side in a container because, well, maybe you just want to do that for some reason. If you decide to do that, you don't actually need to change your business logic. All you're changing is this orchestration around your business logic. So keep that separate. And you'll notice there's this new sensor reading handler struct that implements this handle function. And this is where you can actually put your handler. And in this case, you're simply gonna write the actual temperature out to a log. And if the temperature is over 100, wow, that's hot then you're going to return that as an error. Otherwise, everything is successful, everything's okay. Again, if there's a failure in that business logic, you're gonna push that batch item failure onto that into that vector of batch item failures, then continue processing. Finally, the very last part of this function is going to return the Kinesis event response which allows you to include them batch item failures, which are then gonna go back through the Lambda Polar back out to the Kinesis API. And to actually see this in action now, this repository is set up ready to go because you as a developer use AWS SAM as your preferred method for deploying applications. And I'm sure it has nothing at all to do with the incredibly cute mascot. And there's a SAM template defined in this repository. So you have your SAM template that's using the Rust Cargo Lambda build method to actually go off and compile your Rust application code. And then you'll notice the event configuration is using a stream of type Kinesis passing in your actual Kinesis stream. And this SAM template is also going to really helpfully actually create your Kinesis stream as well. If you jump over to your terminal window now and navigate into the root of this Kinesis message processor template, you can run a SAM build command. SAM's gonna ask you if you're okay using beta features because the Rust comp compilation is still a beta feature. If you're happy with that, hit yes. 
that's going to go off and compile your Rust application code. And once that's done, you can then go off and run a SAM deploy. I'm using custom profile here, so I need to pass in the profile and then also the region, which is EUS1. That's gonna go off now and actually deploy that application code. This should complete really quickly because I've already pre-deployed this just to give you some example. There we go. The other thing that exists in this repository is a way for you as a developer to simulate your IoT devices. So if you come back to your IDE, you'll notice there's this test utility folder, and then you've got another console application in here, which will actually just create a set of IoT devices. In this case, it's creating 10, and then every second, all 10 devices are going to make a call to Kinesis to actually put some data into Kinesis. So this will allow you to simulate the data hitting your Kinesis streams. And to run this, it uses the clap crate to actually allow you to pass in command line arguments at the point of execution. So this application is expecting one command line argument, which is the actual ARN of the Kinesis stream. So after you've run the SAM deploy command, you will actually get back in the screen an output of the actual stream ARN. And then if you navigate down into the test utility folder, and then you want to type cargo run, and then you want to pass some actual arguments to the running application. So to do that with cargo, you type two hyphens, and then anything you put in after the hyphen will be passed to the actual running executable and not as a parameter of cargo run. So you want to pass in the ARN that's just come from that SAM deploy you executed, run that command. This is gonna go off and run now and every single second, it's going to send 10 new records into Kinesis. And to see just what kind of performance you can get with this approach, if you come over to CloudWatch now, you can actually use this really helpful CloudWatch log insights query to actually run some analysis on the performance of your Lambda function. So I'm running this query against the log group for my message processor. And if I actually run this query, that's going to give me back all the recent executions of this Lambda function, but grouped by cold start or warm start. So this Lambda function at cold start takes about 17 milliseconds to execute. And you'll notice out of 162 invokes, there's only ever actually been one cold start. And that's because actually, even at cold start, this function only takes about 20 milliseconds to execute. Data's only been sent once a second, which means there's always going to be a warm execution environment available. Once warm, you're processing data in one, two, maybe 20 milliseconds at P99. Double digit millisecond processing time. This is all with a 128 megabytes of memory. So if you're building one of these high scale IoT input device formatters, whatever they get called in the IoT industry, as you can tell, I'm not an IoT expert. Think about Rust as the choice of programming language, as that first Lambda function that your data hits, because you can use Rust to really, really performantly, but also really sustainably with the low memory allocation. You can use that to do that initial data transformation on your IoT devices. So you don't need to transform data out at the device, right out at the edge. Do that inside a Lambda function, inside your AWS account that you can easily update, easily manage, and write that in a programming language like Rust so that it adds minimal overhead, both from a performance, cost, and resource consumption perspective to your wider AWS organization. Please now go off, tick off that imaginary Jira task in your head, move it to done. I'm telling you the definition of done is just watching this video. So tick, off you go. On to the next one. If you've liked this video, please comment below. Please reach out. Let me know if you'd like to see more content like this and I will see you all in the next one.